We're going to Bernard Shaw in Baghdad. Uh, this is, uh, something is happening outside. The skies over Baghdad have been illuminated. We're seeing bright flashes going off all over the sky. The number one challenge is not just to tell you what and why things happen here, but to explain what developments mean to you and how they'll affect your pocketbook. We had two missions, to survive and to succeed. We were carrying the cable industry's banner when it came to news coverage. My role models were Edward R. Murrow, Walter Cronkite. They were not white journalists. In my mind's eye, they were journalists. I always strove to be the best I could be so that young people following me might be inspired. Inspired would be an understatement. Hello, everybody. I'm David Schuster, and thanks for joining us. As you've learned by now, one of journalism's most important and revered pioneers, Bernard Shaw, has passed away. He died from pneumonia and was 82. I have a personal connection to Bernie. You see, more than three decades ago, I was an intern in CNN's Washington, D.C. Bureau and then spent four years after that working for CNN, D.C. as an assignment editor and field producer. I saw Bernie nearly every day, and he was always as nice and engaging to me, a lower-level newsroom staffer, as he was to CNN's most senior management. We all knew about Bernie's background in the 1960s as a Marine, then a journalist in the 1970s, who left ABC News in 1980 to join Ted Turner's upstart cable news network called CNN. Bernie was a treasured colleague and it was literally the face and voice of CNN and all of us who were there. At countless award ceremonies in the early 1990s, Bernie would always say the hands of a thousand CNN employees are also on this honor. In person, Bernie was gracious, funny, and kind. I'll never forget one night after the 1991 Gulf War, Bernie had returned to Washington, D.C. as a household name and journalism hero. I was waiting outside the Washington Bureau for a courier to take me to a metro station so I could go home. Bernie pulled around in his car from the CNN garage and said, do you need a ride? I'll take you home. In 1992, at the Democratic Convention in New York, a few of us chatted with Bernie at a bar. Most of the conversation was about Bernie's kids. He loved them dearly, and he worried about the impact his career was having on his family. Indeed, for me, Bernie was the ultimate role model. He was a family man and a tireless journalist. And as a journalist, he was a stickler for accuracy, proper grammar, and reporting the facts. Bernie often told those of us who worked with him that the news was more important than the person delivering it. Indeed, I don't ever recall Bernie saying the word me or I. Even when Bernie had a huge scoop, he would report it as... CNN has learned, or sources tell CNN. Through the years, Bernie's approach became something of a relic across much of cable news, an industry that embraced celebrity culture and self-promotion. Years after I left CNN, went to local news, then Fox News, and then MSNBC, I ran into Bernie in Virginia at a golf shop. Bernie liked to play golf in his retirement. Anyway, I was thrilled to see him, but also a bit embarrassed, because at that point, as an anchor at MSNBC, I had been encouraged to offer analysis, personality, and a little attitude. I wondered if Bernie would be disappointed in me. But as soon as I went over and interrupted his inspection of some golf clubs, he lit up and told me he was proud of the work that I was doing. He said he watched many of my shows and loved them. That was Bernie. He was kind, supportive, and encouraging to everybody, even those of us who followed a somewhat different path. Broadcast journalism has changed a lot through the years, but to so many of us, as countless former CNN colleagues are pointing out, Bernard Shaw will always be a personal and professional hero. Bernie, rest in peace.